Afternoon guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and as you can see behind me it's pouring down rain in southeast Ohio today, but my daddy didn't raise no shirkers and when there's work to be done, you just get it done rain or shine. I'm out here under my overhang today and we're working on a second box. And this box is going to be a very minimal crate style box like the last one was, but a little bit different. And that it's going to have some dividers in it and a hinge lid. And it will be for finer woodworking tools. So the first box that we built was for our what I call major woodworking tools. And major woodworking tools being things that will do everything from bring a tree to the ground to splitting that tree down and forming basic shapes with it. So you'll have draw knives and you'll have splitting wedges and you'll have axes in there and you'll have draw knives in there and things of that nature. A fro. Those type things are in a major woodworking box. And your finer woodworking box is going to have more joiner, jointery joinery style tools in it, excuse me, I got tongue twisted there, like planes, like spoke shaves, like different types of saws for cutting both rip saws and crosscut saws, back saws for making mortise and tenon joints, chisels and mortising chisels as well as flat chisels for making mortise and tenon joints. And then you'll have auger bits and things like that to bore holes and create the beginnings of mortise and tenon joints as well as pegging things together and mallets and things of that nature would be in a finer woodworking box or a joinery style type box and then marking implements and things of that nature. Then we'll make a third box that will contain more fine carving tools for making small fine carved objects. So you have a progression of tools in woodworking and there really is a progression in woodworking depending on the final task that you want, how complicated your toolkit really needs to be. So. This goes to really the progression of woodwork that I haven't discussed yet in my videos that I discuss a little bit in my second book, Advanced Bushcraft. And what we need to understand is that for us to be completely self-reliant, we should understand lots and lots of different skill sets in as broad a spectrum as we can. We should be able to go out and cut down trees and do bushcrafting tasks to build a shelter, build camp furnishings, camp cooking implements and things like that very easily with simple tools like an axe, a folding saw, or a bow saw, maybe some type of carving knife and an awl and things like that. But we should also understand for longevity's sake and for self-reliance how to take down bigger trees, how to create dimensional lumber, how to make shingles, how to make more sturdy furniture that's not really tied together or notched together but is actually pegged together or mortise and tenon jointed together. And those type things take more complicated tools and it's a more complicated task. But you should learn all of those tasks. And then you should graduate into possibly even some joinery to understand how to make finer boxes and finer furniture and cabinetry and things like that. Not that you have to become a cabinet maker, but being familiar with those types of tools and how to utilize them as well as refurbish them is very important to your self-reliance. So today, we're going to build a box for our finer woodworking tools. It's going to have a couple dividers in it, it's going to have a lid on it, it's going to be slightly different than our other box, but still a very simple crate style box. Stay with me.
one thing that I definitely want to do with this box is I want my saws to go in here. So I'm going to put a side compartment in this box that the saws can stand upright in, like this. And then I may put a couple separations in here as well for smaller tools. That's what this box is for. There won't be any long tools in this box other than saws, though I'll be in the bottom box. So I'm going to try to figure out where I want this for saws and make that one compartment right now. All right, I put a glue line all the way around this. Now I'm just going to measure to make sure I've got this exactly where I want it before I nail it in. And it's sitting about five to the center right here and five to the center here. So we're pretty well straight. Now we just need to nail it in up the sides real quick. pouring down rain out here today while I'm working on this. Get one on that side, get it right, and we'll get one on this side and get it right. Now we can just score a line down as long as we've got this thing plumb, we can just score a line down the side and run a nail line down there. That's easy enough to do. So we'll just take our square here. We take our square and lay it right here, center it on that nail on that board, and just draw a line straight down. We give ourselves a nail line and we know where to nail this thing. Now I've got two or three planes, but this one here is my favorite and my longest plane. And I want a compartment in here that's going to be good for that. So I'm gonna put this compartment so that it is just the right length for that block plane to sit down inside of and come out fairly easy. We'll measure it. Let's see where we're at here. Outside to outside. If I go to 17, I'll give myself a nice round number there. And I have to go to 17 over here. You don't want this stuff shifting around too much. In here. Okay, that's 17 on the nose there. And we can eyeball it and see if it's plumb. And then again, you know, we're going to nail it in. And we can nail it down one side and across and only get maybe one nail up here in the top. Now we can do the same thing here, just score a line down this nail line, just like that. And we know where to put our nails in if we flip it over and transfer that line this. Then we know where to nail it on the bottom. Alright, so this box is going to be a little bit different in that I'm going to put hinges on this lid. So I'm going to go ahead and get this joint taken care of here. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually put runners across the top of this box like a regular packing crate and nail that down and give ourselves a nice secure lid. You know you got that bar clamp tight enough when you start squeezing glue up out of the seam like that. Then you got that thing good and tight. At that point I turn it over, get the other glue line dropped down as well. Just make sure that I've got that thing good and secure and it's nice and even. I'm going to put straps on here to even it up too. I could also use two clamps in a couple different places there to make sure that thing was nice and level, but I think we're going to be okay as is like this. Putting it on top of this box is going to make it really level when we put our straps and nail them on. That's going to hold it for sure. Alright, so I've cut two battens here. They're just made out of 
like a surveying stake. And those are going to go across the top of our box like this. We'll get a measurement there of where we want to line those up on the box. We're going to go six inches in here, six here, and then we'll just score a line here just like this. Across our box, and we'll lay this thing right here. And we'll put some glue on it, and then we'll nail it in. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Got two other Stanley planes here. And I'm going to put this thing on. That was close. <laughs> as you can see, it's pouring down rain on us here. I've got room for a couple more planes in this box as well if I wanted to put them in here. But I'm pretty happy with those three fitting in there that well. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this second video on making another style toolbox. This one having some dividers in it to keep things separated for finer woodworking tools that can't be banged around against each other too much, like planes, like saws that you want to store in an upright position and things like that. And this one again will have a hinged lid on it when I'm done. I've got the lid finished for it, but I haven't put the hinges on it. Pretty simple to screw in a set of hinges, so I didn't think I needed to include that in this video. I haven't bought the hinges yet that I'm going to use for this box. I may even decide to use leather hinges before it's over with. I haven't decided on that yet. But I wanted to get this video done for you. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your views. I appreciate everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.